All right, so in this video, what we're gonna show you is how to troubleshoot and how to actually know what's going on with your Kinetic 6000 drive when you have your status lights and you have different setup features that may or may not be working and I want you to give you a good troubleshooting guide. Now again, a lot of people don't know this stuff, so let's quickly go over how to do this. Now, first and foremost, I wanna shut this drive off Right, so I'm gonna stop it. And then I wanna shut it off. Now I want you to notice, on the actual Kinetic 6000 drive, that the status light is blinking. Right, so the status light is blinking because of the simple fact that it's not on. Now watch, if I cut the drive on, it will change states to a solid light. Okay, so now you see exactly how that works. So if I go off and go on. So, and it changes from a ready state to an on state. See, servo control in this state. And you can tell that from the, the actual software or you can tell that from the face of the drive. We often don't see this because we're not looking inside of cabinets and stuff when we see this stuff going on. So now what I wanna show you too is some miscon misconfiguration things that could possibly happen. Now, first and foremost, we're gonna go offline, and I wanna show you something really quick. So this node, for instance, say if I got the node wrong, say if I got the node, I was, I don't know, I was setting stuff up and I, I, just, I forgot to put the node, or I was setting stuff up and I forgot to put the node on the drive itself. Now, what I mean by the node, let me explain this to you. On the very top right hand corner, there's some dials on your IAM module, which is the very lead, this is an amplifier module of your servo rack. There's some dials on it so you can set the node. I'll point to them real quick. So my node is 10. Now I'm changing this. Say for instance, my node was one in my software and it has been for a while, but I got, I got a brand new one I was gonna put in and for some reason the node was 10, okay? And let's just say that, right? So let's download back to the controller and show you how the Circos network will react. So this is gonna be, uh, you know, very, something that, that a real world case scenario that, that does happen, right? This, this does happen and I wanna show you what the indication will be it will go you know as far as the zero one two three four and and again when it comes down to it this should get stuck in a two state okay so when it comes down to it, it's going to go one two now it's searching for the node it's searching for the node so the drive is actually looking for active nodes it's going to wait in phase two until that the it finds the nodes or the corrective action is taken notice that So if you see that, that means their configuration is wrong for the nodes. Now it does, you know, for that matter, just check your node addressing and that will take place. That will take care of that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna add our node back in. Now, let's just say, again, I could have very well changed the dip switch. Right, I could have very well changed that dip switch. But in the case, to keep this thing simple, keep it easy and to keep without, you know, interfering with the camera and stuff like that, I'm going to go ahead and just change it back in the software so that you can see it go one, two, three, and four, right? These are the phases of the actual Cerakos network on a Kinetic 6000 drive. So you see it going one, two, every time I download, you'll see it reinitialize. Uh, initialize. One, two, three, four and then we're back happy right so now we're back in a happy state it's in a running state it's in it's actually where it is and it knows the configuration is good now i want to take you to another element and show you something else let's just say for instance um like like uh you were you the the drive went out right or the not the drive went out but the motor went out and you didn't have the same motor but you had to change the motor. Say in this this instance, I'm running a MPL uh, B310. And say you you when you went to to get the new motor, all you had was like a, a MPL B320, uh, 
which the size and frame would work. Just the motor's a little bit longer, right? The size and frame would work, but you had to change the catalog number to make it work in the program. <clears throat> now, what if you accidentally fat fingered it and put the wrong motor in there? Or let's just say, for instance, right? Now, what if you, you were coming in here, you were selecting it, and you came out here and you forgot to put the right motor in there? So in our case, we're, we're just changing from a three, uh, 320 or 310 to a 320 now again it's going to know that right so what if you actually put the wrong motor in there and you because you see there's like four indications here that you can check so what if you actually pick the wrong one or you didn't know which one to pick right again that's often the case when it comes down to it because you know it's not like we're all like super you know knowledgeable about every single detail when it comes to you know every io that connects to rockwell right so just understand this is something that I'm developing to help you to uh, help troubleshoot, right? I want to show you this <clears throat> because the Cerco's network is going to react a little bit different and I want you to know how it reacts. So if you see this, you know how to, you know, uh, you know, approach it, right? So now we're going to go through a one, two, three. So now in, in state three, when the, the Cerakos network is in a state of three, it's in phase three, it's checking the drive configuration to make sure that its specific parameters are correct. Okay, before it goes into to phase four, which is making sure it's right. So it's verifying, basically, it's checking the motor catalog number against the selection. That's really all it's doing, okay? So we're, we've actually taken it, escalated it to a different point. We went from one, two, where we were stuck at two, when we had the wrong node address in there. Now we're at a point where we're at state three, right? We're at state three, and state three is checking to make sure the motor catalog is right. And you notice up here, there's a caution symbol up here on your actual motor. Now, again, we'll, let, let's, let's correct these, right? Let's correct these problems. So we're gonna go offline, and we're gonna come back in, and we're gonna just select the right motor. It's just that simple. So we knew that we are a multi-turn encoder. So this is an MPL, and uh, that's what we're actually using. So I'm gonna put that back and download one more time. Now, I wanna show you another instance too of your Cerakos that a lot of people don't necessarily talk about. Now, and this, this too could be something along the lines of checking the fiber or stuff like that, right, too, because when it comes down to it, you're going to get a, you could or could not get a fault. Say, for instance, you pulled the power, right? So you pulled the power, you reset it, you were trying to get it back going, but all of a sudden the Cerakos is not connected anymore, right? So the Cerakos is not connecting more. It's gonna sit there and just, just circle, okay? It's gonna go in phase zero. It's not gonna do anything. Now, I want you to understand to the connections here. There's a red light on the actual send to the actual controller. there is not a red light on the actual receive. So it's a 50-50 shot, right? But even coming out of the Cerakos or out of, out of the actual Kinetics 6000 drive, you're going to have a red light coming out of it whether there's a cable connected or not. That's how you know which one you can actually connect the receive to. So as we connect these now, it's gonna go back and it's gonna go through its, its Cerakos checking ring, right? The phases of, of checking one, two, three, and four. Again, one, you check the fiber connection, okay? If it's a zero and it's just steady going, you're checking the fiber connection. If it's a one, again, it could be, you know, look at the drive for the node and stuff like that. 
again checking against the uh, if it's a two checking the, the verify verification of the the correct configuration Conf correct configuration would be again checking to make sure that the the hardware is correct and the 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 actual drive is is correct you put in and the nodes there's many many different things um, that could could fall in play these are general practices um, and just general things that I'm trying to you know give you just right off the rip just to say these are some common practices and common things that I see you know when it comes to changing a drive or changing a motor right and then also connecting the Cerakos network also too there's some baud rate switches that are on top and you need to check those as well so verify that the baud rate is the same too so what are some common features and things we need to go over really quick again your fiber connections are right we also need to make sure our node is right we also need to make sure that everything is connected properly now that was the actual connection for the actual uh, feedback loop the, the feedback to the motor right and then obviously make sure that just everything is correct on your hardware now when it comes down to it uh, make sure your software is in line with it too like because again you're not all the time going to have the proper motor for what you're doing so in order to do that make sure you have your proper motor set up inside of your controller and you have everything done correctly you know you you checked off the, the right things you, you know your drive enables off or on or if you're using it and different things as far as that goes so there's there's a multitude of things that could possibly happen and granted, this is a, a Logix environment of version 30. Um, you can see that right here. This is a, a Logix version 30 that we're doing. I just changed my uh, Windows parameters so that I could get the best uh, perf uh, performance so that when I do videos and stuff like that, you can actually see that. I can go right here and go to best performance, best performance right here. Adjust best performance, not appearance. I do that for the video so that everything goes nice and smooth and there's no hangups, there's no weights, and everything is really easy to see. Now, again, these were just a couple different scenarios of troubleshooting a Kinetic 6000 drive. So I wanted to give you a rough overview and some different instances in real world environments that do happen. Okay, so even now, we have everything working. We can right click and we can go over here and we can test it, right? We can come in here and test it, we can cut it on, right? We can come in here and jog it. Now we're jogging at a, a zero speed, but you know, now we're jogging at 10. Okay. And let's just say, and that's pretty much going, I, being that I have this servo running at a, uh, off of 110, it's, that's pretty fast. So now we're going to go forward and we're going to go reverse and easily swap it back and forth. So, um, there's different things you can do. You can, and we'll go through the, the actual, um, motion direct commands on a later later video I just wanted to show you a couple different things to help help you troubleshoot a circus network and a kinetic 6000 drive so hopefully that was helpful and um, you know what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna keep building and, and grow upon this because again that's the focus of helping and understanding real-world scenarios that happen every single day so we'll catch you guys on the next one